In this video, we'll look at um, unit testing in Eclipse using JUnit. I'll start by creating a new Java project here. <coughs> uh, let's call it unit testing. And let's create a simple program in my source folder. I'll create a new class. Uh, let's call this class area. Uh, let's put it in a package. And hit finish. So this class is a very simple class. We'll use it to create some static methods to calculate the area of uh, multiple shapes. So I'll create my first static method here that will return a double representing the area of a square for example. So calculate area of square and this method will take a double representing the length of that square and it will just return back um, the square of that squ um, of that length so math dot um, power and we'll take the length to the power of 2 or we can just multiply it by itself <coughs> length to the power of 2. So now that I have a method I want to test, I can create my test case. Um, I can put it directly in a package, in the same package or in a different package. So I'll go to new and instead of creating a class, I'll be creating a JUnit test case. So I can call it whatever I want. Let's call it example here. And let's click on finish. Now. In older versions of Eclipse, it you will have to manually import the library or add the JUnit 5 library. In here, it allows you to do it directly. So perform the following actions, add JUnit 5 library to build path, click OK, and you'll see you will have um, another library file added here, which is the JUnit 5. You already had the JRE system library, and now I have the JUnit 5. Now you'll see that the, your job file already imports some of the classes that you might need to use from the assertions package and the API, um, JUnitJupyter.API package. And it already created a test here, a failing test, which will just say that there is nothing yet implemented. So if I wanted to run this test, I can click on it and click on run. And that would run the test case and you'll see the JUnit tab here appearing and you'll see that we had one run with one failure and you'll see that the example here this is the class and this is the test method that we um, ran and it will tell you that the assertion failed error not yet implemented so let's modify on this test instead of just making it fail immediately I'll um, use the assert equal method and we'll put the expected value for example if we wanted to test the um, calculate area of the square with the length of 10 we should be expecting 100 and i'll call that method area dot calculate area of square with the length of 10. so the assert equals method basically will compare the expected value with the actual result we got from executing that method if they match, that means our test passed, otherwise our test will fail. So let's run our test again. And you'll see now I have the green bar here. We ran one, we have zero errors and zero failures. And if I expand on here, you will see that it ran this test method and it passed. So we're testing with a positive um, length here. So let's name this test um, square positive and let's add another test to test if the length that we received was um, a negative value so I'm going to copy this test and test it with a negative value now ideally if I send a negative value I should be getting an exception that this is an illegal argument because I should not allow a negative value for my length of a square. So instead of using assert equals, I can use another method, which is checking what exception this method will throw. So assert throws will provide an exception type. So this is our illegal argument. Ex 
exception dot class and then we'll call that method and see if that method throws an exception with the negative length i'll be using a lambda expression here so area dot calculate area of the square with a negative length now since i'm not throwing an exception it will just return 100 um, which is basically a failing test case here so let's try to run it and you'll see i got the red bar i have two tests ran one of them was a failure so test square positive passed you'll see the green check mark test square negative assertion failed error expected um, java.lang illegal argument exception to be thrown but nothing was thrown because we were not throwing an exception now i could add a message here to indicate what is the uh, what are we supposed to do so for example um, make sure to throw an exception for negative length and when I run this now it will give me that message um, too in the description so make sure to throw a negative length um, an, an exception for negative length so now that I know what's wrong with my code I can go back to my um, area method here calculate area and add if the length is less than zero we can throw um, a new illegal argument exception argument exception now the illegal argument exception is part of the java.lang package so I do not need to import it let's go back to our example test and let's run it and see if that passes and you'll see it actually passed for to both test cases with positive and a negative value as my length now the most important part about testing it is to make sure that we are testing everything we need to test in our program so every path of execution needs to be tested and i can make sure that i'm testing everything by checking the code coverage of my program so let's assume that i did not have a test case for negative values and i want to make sure that i'm covering everything that needs to be tested in my program one tool i could i can use is ecl emma which is a plugin you can add into your eclipse so i can go to my eclipse marketplace from help and let's search for that tool it's already installed in my eclipse but we can look for it here ecl emma and this is the code that will allow me to check the code coverage in my test cases and you'll see it's already installed if you do not have it installed already um, make sure to install it and it will ask you to restart Eclipse and once you restart it we will have access to the to the plugin in your Eclipse so now instead of running the test case directly I can right click on it and I can click on coverage as JUnit test and you'll see that the test cases are displayed here we have one test that passed so zero failures but on the bottom side of your screen you'll see we have a new tab coverage and it will show you how much we are covering in each one of these files so you'll see that in the example here we are covering every statement basically but in the area i'm only covering 53 percent of the code and if you look at the code itself it will highlight the things that you did not test so anything in green that means it was tested anything in red it means it was never tested for example we never tested throwing a new illegal um, argument exception and you'll see the yellow basically tells you that there's something that you missed so one of two branches were missed so we only test if the um, length was greater than zero which is in this test case but we did not test if the length was less than or equal to zero uh, so let's run this this is the test square negative and let's run again our test so coverage as and j unit test again our test cases should pass but you will see that i have more test passing in here so we have the asset throws it's showing as yellow but let's go back to the area here you'll see that everything that i have in the f statement has been tested all the statements were executed but I have a red here because I did not actually 
create an object of this class or test it that class itself. 